Will Social Security even be there for me? So my man, <clears throat> Bike, writes in. <laughs> I, and I get this a lot, and I just, um, it, it actually frustrates me. Not my man, Mike. It just frustrates me how many people don't recognize that we've been through this before time and time again. Anyway, so he sent me this a screenshot from Social Security. Dot gov will social security be there for me our trust old age survivor insurance that's o a s i and then we got d i o a s d i that's what it's called old age survivor disability insurance o a s d i all right and so we pay 6.2 percent into o a s d i we pay another 1.45 into medicare that's what we pay i'm self-employed so i pay both sides of that i pay uh 12.4 percent yeah, 6.2, 12.4% for the employer and the employee. All right, so that's how we pay. We fund the Social Security with our payroll contributions. On top of that, Social Security has this trust fund of X amount of dollars that they're getting interest on. All right, now it's all a Ponzi scheme. There's no two ways around this, but I mean, it is what it is. And so that's what the Social Security trust fund, they get your revenues from our taxes and the revenues from the interest they accumulate on the money that's in the trust fund. All right, so transferring our needs uh, to meet our customers. The OASI DI trust funds have reached the brink of depletion in asset reserves. However, in 1977 and 1983, Congress made substantial changes to the program that resulted in $2.9 trillion in the trust fund today. All right, so as we sit here today, we got about $3 trillion in the trust fund. The trust fund will be exhausted come 2034 which is interesting. I'm going to share with you because I got my social security statement right here from night from 2010. And it says differently for the trust fund. We can look back at social security in 1990s. It's the same thing. Anyway, it just varies, but within the mid 2030s, the trust fund will be exhausted. Now the trust fund being exhausted doesn't mean social security isn't there. It just means at the end of the day, it will only have enough from payroll taxes to fund uh, basically 78 cents on the dollar. And that's it in 2035, I think is the most recent one. 78 cents on the dollar. All right, so let's so let's go with this, all right? So we're saying at the end of the day, just payroll taxes alone, if you made $1,000 on Social Security, you're still going to get uh, $780 of that, all right? All right, so let's go into this a little bit. I want to take you a trip through time through newspapers.com. This is a San Francisco examiner. Uh, September 1994, a crisis, retirement crisis looms for boomers Generation X. Marsha Stepanek says millions of people between the ages of 35 and 45 won't have enough money to retire or will be forced to live their twilight years in poverty, said a panel of pension experts on Monday. Hmm. So this is in 1994. I was 24 years old then, and uh, my dad was born in 1947, my mom in 1946. I don't know how old they were, but they're baby boomers. Millions of people between the ages of 35 and 45 won't have enough money to retire or be forced to live in poverty. Hmm, the retirement savings crisis. Of all the people working today, some 20% can't afford to save for retirement. Where have we heard this before? Those who earn the most aren't saving or investing much at all. This guy from the Ex Securities Exchange Commission, SEC. There is a retirement savings crisis in America. The American dream is cresting. And when it comes to retirement, individuals are now on their own. Again, this is an SEC commissioner, not some freaking, you know, what's that guy's Adam Schiff or no, what's the guy Schiff, something like that, Peter Schiff guy. Then he goes on. Social security won't be able to provide much more than food stamps for the elderly. Companies won't be providing much as they do now. And many companies won't even be around in the next 17 to 30 years when most baby boomers will be retiring. It's not just a problem for baby boomers, this guy said. The Generation X need to save at least 10% of their income for the first day on the job in order to retire to avoid subsistence living. Nor is the problem just bad personal savings and investments. Dramatic changes in the economy are going to make it tougher for retirees of all ages. The chairman of this of the, uh, New York 9X, is that the stock? No, it's NYSE. I don't know. Anyway, William Ferguson 9X. Many companies in America are spending less on Workers' pensions, More, most of the 3 million American jobs lost during the 80s were protected by lucrative pension plans, but most jobs now don't come with pensions. 
Karen Ferguson of the Pension Rights Center said, do-it-yourself retirement plans uh, have not attracted enough people to sign up since 1981. In the last 10 years, participation by Americans of some kind of retirement savings has plummeted by 30%. Women, she said, will be especially hurt. In 1988, the average pension benefit paid to women was 37% of the amount paid to men who had comparable jobs. I wonder why. The difference results from shorter tenured workplaces is 70%. All right. And women who are homemakers don't work. Not all conference participants were as pessimistic. The director of the CBO, and I usually bash the CBO, said maybe many baby boomers were living better than their parents did with some 30% as much higher living standards. Uh, he also said the economy will continue to grow. There'll be more women in the workforce and more baby boomers would get substantial inheritance from their uh, parents. All right. Um, we've heard this. So let me go on. Because this is from 1979. Recent government statistics illustrate the potential of a program that uh that fives uh, uh, okay data show that although 46 percent of u.s families could afford to buy a median price home in 1970 only 27 percent could do, afford to do so in 1976. the dramatic drop is direct proportion to soaring prices the median cost of a house rising from 23,000 in 1970 to 49,000 in 1977. the average cost of a home may be as high as 78,000 in 1981. Interesting because interest rates weren't going down. I just, again, this, what is old is now new. It's the same thing here. It's the same thing. We can't afford houses. The interest rates are too high. The price of homes are too high. Well, the interest rates are much higher back then than they are now. That's just a fact. And yet the home prices, have you looked? They didn't go down in the 1970s and 80s. All right, let's just keep going. Go back in time to 1981. Uh, Social Security bankrupt. And this is Bill Buckley, everyone's favorite CIA agent uh, who... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, and there's our Buchwald or Buckwald or whatever. Talk about Social Security bankrupt. Um, let's, let's keep going. Everybody's favorite bankster from Citigroup. How this guy is not in uh, orange, I don't know. But uh, uh, Robert Rubin said, and this is in 1996, Social Security will be bankrupt by 2029. Social Security will be bankrupt, unable to pay benefits in 2029. You see where they say, unable to pay benefits. Unless lawmakers take steps to shore up the system. That's what we said in, in 1996. This is after Clinton raised the taxes, by the way, in 1993 with a Democratic Congress. And this is after Reagan raised the taxes in 1983 with a Democratic House and a Republican Senate. The old age pension system will run a surplus of about $65 billion, rising to $100 billion by 2000. But however, the retirement of the baby boom generation is about 2010 will rapidly deplete that. Social Security payroll tax receipts will fall short of, outlay, uh, uh, of outlays in 2012, and then the system will be insolvent by 2029, a year earlier than previously thought. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so uh, Ruben and the Shirley Carter, the program's administrator, administrator, played down any threat to the future retiree Social Security benefits. There's no crisis situation, she said. Uh, the program can meet all obligations until 2029 and require only modest changes until then. All right. Point being is, and even this right here is from 2010. It says Social Security will have the benefits. I don't have my reading glasses. Uh, uh, in 2006, this is my statement right here. In 2010, <clears throat> in 2006, we'll begin paying more benefits than we collect, more in benefits than we collect in taxes. Without changes, by 2037, the trust fund will be exhausted. Uh, we'll only be able to pay 76 on the dollar. All right, so 2029, we even had, if you go back to newspapers.com, is 2025 is going to go bankrupt. It ranges between mid-2030s now. They haven't done really any changes other than the small in 2015 with uh, Obama and Paul Ryan. Did a couple of things in terms of filing and suspended and whatnot. But nothing really drastic has changed. Yeah, so what happened in 1981 where Bill Buckley and uh, R. Buchwald, Buckwald, whatever his name was, and all these other guys were railing about Social Security? Well, they fixed it. <laughs> so I'm just going to share with you real quick. Oh, here we got some from 1990. This guy, Bob Armanino. I'm not sure who he is. They got a investment manager, a savings bank of something county. He says Social Security will go bankrupt by 2018. Oh, my lands. In 1935, 40 workers contributed to Social Security for every recipient. The ratio today is 3 to 1. And it's supposed to be basically less than 2 to 1 in 2020. Baby boomers may become the baby bus generation. Hmm. 
Interesting. Income slashed at retirement. Income for most Americans is cut in half at retirement. 20% of our senior citizens are below poverty level. Is that true? Retirement may take millions. Households with age 45 with age 45 with income in the 80,000s will need 1.2 million in financial assets to retire comfortably. That's 2.8 million adjusted for a 4.5% inflation. All right, that's freaking stupid. The whole thing is just dumb. Uh, the point being is Social Security did not go bankrupt in 2018. Benefit payments are projected to see Social Security payments by the year 2018. That did not happen. It's projected that you will rely on Social Security for 20% of your post-retirement income, your pension for 30%, and personal investments for 50%. Who project that? Where is that projected come from? I mean, that's a 1990. The point being is it, it didn't, none of this happened. That can't, doesn't mean it won't, but people don't understand how politics works. That's what drives me crazy. So let's watch. All right, so we, right here, we got Dan Rosty Rostenkowski, who is the head, who is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee uh, during the George H.W. Bush, and then I think during Ray, uh, Clinton, too. He's the most powerful man in government because everything goes through the House Ways and Means Committee. Every expenditure, expenditure goes through there. Thus, it has to get out of the committee in order to be approved. And here he is, the original town hall battle. Run, Rosty, run. Getting rid of the timeless programs? Ah, yeah, right. Uh, the point being is he was, Bob is too strong, we're run out of a town hall because of small changes to social security payments. And this is guy is a left-wing liberal from Chicago in, uh, in a left-wing district in his own, uh, his own district. And they ran him out of a town hall on the idea of changing social security benefits. That's why they call social security the third rail. You touch it, your political career is gone. We talked about uh, privatizing social security accounts in, in the 90s when uh, Clinton uh, was a, a president and the Republicans had taken over Congress for the first time in 40 years in 1994. Never happened. I'm close. Bush talked about doing it with his political capital on us. He won in 2004 by 60,000 votes and he was going to spend some political capital on privatizing Social Security. Andrew Biggs, who I've interviewed a couple of times on my channel, uh, was, was the head guy for Bush to do that. Never happened. It will never happen. It's never going to happen, man. Social Security is what we've all come to rely on. Oh, by the way, the we only have 1.75 taxpayers per one in, in, uh, recipient. Yeah, well, what was the tax rates back then? In fact, I write about that in my book. You can retire on Social Security. I write about that. So let me just take a brief here. Real so we'll go to the, uh, this is going to be page 86 in my book. You can retire on Social Security, chapter 13. Tax rates as a percent of taxable earnings. Rates for employees and employers. In 1937 and 1949, it was 1%. That was it. So when they say, it's just one, uh, we, we had 40 employers, uh, workers for one employee, one recipient, I should say. Yeah, we also had 1% payroll tax on both sides. Fast forward to 1968, it was 3.8% on both sides. Fast forward till today, as I've already said, it's 6.4 on both sides. Plus, we're paying 1.45 for health uh, hospital insurance, which is part A of Medicare. Dude, it's the idea. <laughs> so a quick fix is you raise the payroll tax by 25 basis points, a quarter percent on each side. That's it. Done and done, man. And then you raise the taxes that go to pay Social Security for folks who make a million dollars of income any of their qualified dividends or long-term capital gains is taxed as OI, ordinary income, guaranteed to pay for Social Security, not for freaking Senate of Ukraine to fix Social Security. Done. You raise the payroll taxes, you tax qualified dividends and uh, long-term capital gains, like, you know, what's his name, freaking crazy Warren Buffett. I pay less than my secretary. All right, let's tax your dividends and capital gain, long-term capital gains as OI. I got no qualm with that. And that money will be used to fund Social Security. Done and done. It's just that simple, man. If you think this is going to break down, you don't follow politics. Lastly, I just chuck all these people who say, oh, I'm worried about Social Security. Oh, what are you going to do for health care? Well, I'm going to Obamacare. Oh, what are you going to do at 65? Oh, I'm going to Medicare. Huh. Because Medicare and Obamacare in a world of hurt compared to Social Security, man. But some, for some reason, no one talks about that. It's crazy. All right. Love to hear your thoughts. We'll see you.